No second chance. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 19. Jesus went and made proclamation to the spirits now in prison. When did Jesus preach to spirits in prison and who were they? Peter's words about the preaching of Jesus are found in an extended passage, 1 Peter 3.13 through 4.19, on the meaning and purpose of suffering in the lives of Christians. In these verses, Peter reminds readers of the suffering of Jesus Christ in his undeserved death and the results that came from that death. The cross was not a defeat but a spiritual victory that brought salvation to all who believe. Through his death and resurrection, Jesus was triumphant over sin, death, and Satan. Moreover, nothing can come against Christians that is beyond the power and control of Jesus Christ. Peter 3.22 Jesus' triumph in the crucifixion and resurrection is certain and not in question. What has been debated through the centuries is when and how Jesus made proclamation to spirits in prison. Even the reformer Martin Luther struggled with this verse's exact meaning, finding it to be strange and obscure. One common view is that associated with the Apostles' Creed, but not the longer and more detailed Nicene Creed. In the words, he descended into hell, which understands that between the crucifixion and resurrection, Jesus preached to imprisoned spirits in hell. These spirits are understood to have been either fallen angels, perhaps from Genesis 6, or humans from the time of Noah or other Old Testament times, who are awaiting the final judgment of God at the end of this age. Often, this proclamation is then viewed to have been one of condemnation, in which Jesus said, in effect, I told you so, and announced his victory over sin and death. Also associated with this view, but taking a different interpretive tack, is an understanding of a second chance at salvation after death, though verse 20 limits the audience to those of Noah's day. Though this passage is often cited in support of such a descent, we do not find the passage to teach such an activity. See also the comments on Ephesians 4, 9. Nor is there any support in the Bible for a second chance at salvation after death. Hebrews 9, 27. A second view is that Jesus proclaimed his victory to fallen angels, not between his death and resurrection, but at the time, unrecorded, of his ascension into heaven. Acts 1, 9. There was a strong tradition and belief within Judaism during the New Testament era of fallen angels being kept in prison. See, for example, the extra-biblical book 1 Enoch 10-16 and 21. While there was a lot of interest in angels during Jesus' day, there is no certainty that Peter's readers were aware of the writing and tradition of 1 Enoch. A third major view with a long history of support, including Augustine, Aquinas, and many during the Reformation, is that the pre-incarnate Christ preached through Noah to his generation. In this understanding, the preaching was done by Christ through the Holy Spirit and the person of Noah. Just as the Holy Spirit spoke through King David in his day, Acts 1 16 and 4 25 so too did it happen in noah's day while he was building the ark before the great flood the spirit preached repentance to the unbelievers of noah's generation who refused to repent and are now in hell the view also fits well with first peter 1 verses 10 to 11 which speaks of the pre-incarnate christ speaking through the old testament prophets one shortcoming of this view is that spirit 
is almost never used in the New Testament in reference to people. None of the interpretations is fully satisfactory, and each has grammatical, lexical, or theological shortfalls, though the third view seems most consistent with the immediate context. What is certain is that Jesus' resurrection was confirmation of all that was prophesied in the Old Testament, and that Jesus Christ is at the right hand of God, having gone into heaven after angels and authorities and powers had been subjected to him. James 3, 22.